Hi, and welcome to another SecretOnTourist.com video. Today we get the pleasure of speaking to Bob Berg, a best-selling author and speaker. Uh, thank you for being on with us, Bob. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about Bob, uh, certainly Bob wrote a book recently, The Go-Giver, which uh, for me as an individual and as, a, as an author myself, I don't find a lot of value in a lot of different books because there's a lot of topics out there. But The Go-Giver definitely struck a chord with me and so I, I decided to reach out to Bob and see if we could uh, schedule a conversation about it. And so, you know, thank you again for being on. But before we really get to the meat of the interview today, Bob, and, and talk a lot about The Go-Giver, I want to get some background for people that don't know much about you in terms of how, how did you come up, you know, in the job world? And how, where did you find your careers? You know, give us some insight about your, your track record previous to you know, being a, a best-selling book author. Sure. I began as a tele actually radio and then television broadcaster. Uh, I had worked my way up to late-night news anchor for a very small ABC affiliate in the Midwest. Uh, it had been my dream since being a kid to actually to be a sportscaster, but the, the job I got was in news. And, and uh, I, yeah, I really... I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I could read the news... Uh, that wasn't an issue, but I was 24 years old, didn't at that time really have a good grasp of the news, and I really didn't care. <laughs> and so it, it didn't, I, it, I always reminded myself of a, later on a movie line in, um, I'm trying to think of the movie, the one, the Ghostbusters, where, where Sigourney Weaver said to Bill Murray, you know, you, uh, you remind me more of a talk show host. And I probably would have been better at that because I certainly wasn't any good at the news, but could have carried on a conversation with anyone. And uh, I think I was even at that time a little bit too positive for the medium itself. My idea of a good newscast opening would have been to say something like, good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Berg in the news tonight. Everything's great. <laughs> Go to bed. You know, we'll let you know if something comes up. And so I, it wasn't long before I was not a newscaster anymore, and I found myself <laughs> having what I call graduated into selling. And uh, so I got a job in sales, and I, while I intuitively knew that selling was about finding a way to provide value to a, a prospect who would then become a, a customer or a client, I had no knowledge of what selling was about. And the training was minimal at best, uh, and, you know, with the company I was with at first. And so I floundered for a while. And then I, I was in a bookstore, and I, I and this is 30 years ago now. This is when bookstores were basically more about books than they were about everything else. And I came across a book called How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins. And, of course, that's a classic. I had never heard of it at the time. Even reading the title filled me with this amazing sense of hope. Why? Because the title said How to Master the art of selling. In other words, what it said to me was, while I, I don't think I would have verbalized it this way, it said to me there was a system. It wasn't just a matter of try. You know, I had the motivation. I just didn't have the information. And that was what I needed. And so I devoured that book. And within a matter of weeks, my sales went through the roof. What was the difference in me then and three weeks earlier? I had the information. And it's so much of what you teach. And, I, you know, of course, I read your story, and it's a wonderful story of, of how you came here and really just, wow, you went after it. And, you know, it's, it's really, I think, and now you teach a great system to people. And what is a system? I, I define a system as simply the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. In other words, the key is predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired result of B, then you know that all you need to do is A and do A continually and constantly, and you will get the desired result of B. And so that's, you know, that's, that's sort of how I saw it. And I began to study, study Zig Ziglar, who's another guy who became a hero of mine. And then, you know, I'd start going to all the seminars and read the books. I made a study of sales, a study of selling. Whatever our profession is or our industry or however we want to call it, I prefer to think of sales as a profession. I believe it is. I believe entrepreneurship in and of itself is. I, you make a study of it. You learn all you can about it 
from the people who've been successful. And of course, you know, that's everything that you're about in your organization. It's being an entrepreneur first and then being a teacher. So yeah, I love, I love what you do. Well, well, thank you. But let, let's, you said some really interesting things here in your career. So you went from television to sales, right? And yes. that's, and that's, Almost like the you were a go getter in your own life, like you, you were going after what you wanted, right? Mm -hmm. But then your book is called the Go Giver, so doesn't that kind of contradict what what happened in your own life? Well, so the question is: is being a go getter the opposite of being a go giver? And you know, we don't believe it is. We think that you know when you think at first that the that when we talk about the go giver, the basic premise of the book is simply that shifting your your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we mean constantly and consistently providing value to others. In a free market-based society, people are going to buy from you, they're going to do business with you because they are receiving value from the transaction and the relationship. They're, they're, and we'll talk about this later if you'd like, that they're receiving more in what's called use value than in the cash value they're exchanging for. A very basic rule of economics is that people will exchange their money for that which they feel is of equal or greater value than the money they're exchanging it for. And this takes place while you, the salesperson or entrepreneur, makes a healthy profit. In other words, both sides come away winning. But the key is you've got to focus on giving that value to others. That comes first. So we say, so being a go-getter, being a go-giver, well, see, we love go-getters. Because go-getters make things happen. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You came over here. You went after it. You knew it. It wasn't just, you know, you know. Uh, you can have the best thoughts in the world. You can have the best ideas. You can have the greatest intention. But without action being put into the mix, nothing's going to happen. It simply cannot happen. Now, Many go get. There's no. The neat thing is, there's no natural division between a go getter and a go giver. Many go getters are also go givers, and every go giver is also a go getter. The opposite of a go giver, John David Mann, my awesome co-author of the Go Giver. Uh, what we would say is the opposite of a go giver is a go taker, and that's that person who feels almost entitled, if you will, to take, take, take without having added value to the person, to the process, to the situation. They are I-focused. They are me-focused. Where we say when you're a go-giver, you're very action-oriented. You're a go-getter also. But you move from an I-focus or a me-focus to an other focus, where you're laser-focused on creating value on an ongoing, consistent basis for the other person. So let, let's talk a second about this providing value. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs obviously are, sell a product or service, and to them, obviously, there's a lot of value in what they're selling. How, how does an entrepreneur measure, in, in your context, how do you measure what value your product or service, in a sense, is worth? Since it, it might be new, you're an entrepreneur, you don't necessarily haven't seen a competitor introduce the same product to the marketplace. Okay, that's a great question. And let's look first at the difference between price and value then how we would recognize that value and the importance of being able to communicate it as that prospect understands it to be a value because it's always about that that prospect you know it's it, it's like you tie it's like your third circle it's that understanding of really what's important you know of where and so so first the law of value law number 1 which is the foundational principle says your um, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Now, this sounds a little bit counterproductive because I give more in value than you take in payment. That sounds like a recipe for bankruptcy. You know, how do you stay? How do you you survive in your business? Never mind thrive. So we simply need to understand the difference between price and value. Price is a dollar amount. It's a dollar figure. It's it's finite. It, it is what it is. Value, on the other hand, is the relative worth or desirability of a thing to the end user. In other words. What is it about this, this thing, this product, service, concept, idea that brings so much worth to that other person that they'll willingly exchange their money for it and be ecstatic that they did while you make a very healthy profit? Uh, uh, 
Anyone in any business can relate to this. I, I often bring up, just for the sake of simplicity, the accountant who you hire to do your taxes, uh, who charges you $1,000. That's his <laughs> price, right? That's his fee for his price. But what does he give you in, in value in return? He saves you $5,000. 